everyone, welcome to yet another fun and exciting lesson here at Father's Art Kids. Guys, today we're going to explore God's Word together and spend some time in His presence. Now, what can be more fun than that? <laughs> Nothing, right? Because guys, spending time with God and learning more about Him is always so much fun. Now, if it's your first time here at Father's Heart Kids, I just want to let you know you are so welcome here and we are so happy to have you here. Now, are you guys ready to get started? Well, let's then close our eyes so we can open today's lesson with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for a brand new day and thank you for bringing us together again so we can learn more about you and your word. Please make us aware of your presence, especially when we praise and worship you. And Lord, please also help us to grow closer and closer to you as we learn more about the Bible. In Jesus' name we pray this. And we all say, Amen. So okay everyone, it's now time to praise and worship God and show Him just how much we love Him. So let's quickly jump up so we can sing and dance together for God. My Jesus knows my name When I'm sleeping or awake No matter what I do He'll never leave His words are true I tell Him what I love I tell Him when I'm scared I tell Him everything Jesus is always there I'm spinning round, I'm running free I'm having fun, yeah, with my King No one is That's you My Jesus knows my name When I'm sleeping or awake No matter what I do He'll never leave His words are true I tell Him what I love I tell Him when I am scared I tell Him everything Jesus is always there
friends forever, BFF. Best friends forever, my BFF. That's you. Best friends forever, BFF. Best friends forever, BFF. Best friends forever, my BFF. That's you. Wow, everyone, thank you so much for dancing and singing with me for Jesus. It was just so much fun. Now, guys, before we get going with our Bible story of today, let's first do a quick recap of what we learned last week. Who can now tell me what our story was called? That's right. It was called A Hairy Tale, and it was now based on Judges 13 to 16. Now, the reason our story was called A Hairy Tale was because it was all about a man called Samson and his long hair. Now, in our story, guys, we saw how the Israelites were once again in trouble because they disobeyed God. And because of their disobedience, God allowed the Philistines to take control over them. But God was gracious and made a plan to set them free. And that's where Samson comes in. Now, to help Samson free the Israelites, God gave him super strength. But he had to make a few promises to God. One of them being, he must never cut his hair. Now, unfortunately, Samson fell in love with a Philistine woman named Delilah. And this is where everything went south. Because you see, the Philistines went to Delilah and promised her, a lot of money if she could now find out from Samson where the secret to his strength is. Now, at first, Samson tried to resist telling Delilah his secret, but she just kept on asking him and asking him. So, in the end, he then told her that the secret to his strength was in his hair. Now, sad enough, Delilah betrayed Samson and told the Philistines what he told her. And they then cut off his hair and captured him. <sighs> Guys, and this is now where Samson realized he messed up. So he asked God for forgiveness to give him now also his strength back so he can defeat the Philistines like he was supposed to do in the first place. Now from our story, guys, we learned three important things. Number one was obedience to God matters. Number two was having the wrong friends can get us into trouble. And then lastly, number three, God will forgive us and use us despite our mistakes. Now, guys, this is just a quick summary of what we learned from our story. So if you missed it, it might not actually make sense. So please make sure to go back and watch the entire lesson if you missed it. Now, who's ready to say our memory verse of last week together? Awesome. Let's then quickly say it together. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite. He will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. Judges 13 verse 5. Well done, guys. You all did so well. So, guys, let's now move on and look at today's Bible story. Today's Bible story, guys, is called Wherever You Go. And it is now based on Ruth chapter 1 to chapter 2. And then also chapter 4, verse 9 to 17. Are you guys now ready to see what our story is all about? Awesome. Let's then watch it together. A famine came to Israel. Elimelech, Naomi, and their sons went to Moab to find food. Elimelech died. The sons married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. Then the sons died too. The three women had no husbands. 
When the famine in Israel was over, Naomi decided to go home. Stay in Moab, she said to her daughters-in-law. It's your home. Orpah stayed, but Ruth said, Wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Together, Ruth and Naomi went back to Israel. It was harvest time in Israel. Naomi told Ruth to gather the bits of grain left behind in a field. The field belonged to Boaz, Elimelech's relative. Boaz approached Ruth. You were very kind to Naomi, Boaz said. Leaving home must have been hard. May God bless you. He gave Ruth food and told his workers to watch over her. Ruth told Naomi what happened. Naomi smiled. When someone dies, his closest relative cares for his family. That person is their kinsman redeemer. Boaz is our kinsman redeemer. Stay close to him. So Ruth stayed close to Boaz. He liked her more each day. Boaz bought Elimelech's land and took care of Naomi and Ruth. Then he asked Ruth to marry him. Ruth had a son called Obed. Obed's son was Jesse. Jesse's son was David. And David became Israel's greatest king. So God blessed Ruth just as Boaz had prayed. Wow, guys. What a beautiful story. I can't wait to share with you guys what we can learn from it. But before I can now do that, I first want to give you guys some background info on Naomi and Ruth and the times they were living in so that our story will make more sense to you guys. Because remember, these Bible stories happened thousands of years ago. Now firstly guys, Naomi, her husband Elimelech and their two sons were originally from Israel which was the new name of the promised land. Now, a time came when there was a big shortage of food in Israel, and that's why they decided to move and live in another land. Now, the land they moved to was called Moab. Now, guys, it's very important for us to know that the people of Israel and the people of Moab weren't particularly fond of each other. But despite of that, Naomi and her family still settled in Moab and her two sons fell in love with women from Moab and got married. Now in our story we read how while they were staying there, unfortunately Naomi's husband passed away and then not long after the passing of her husband, her two sons also passed away. Now I'm sure you guys can just imagine how difficult all of this must have been for Naomi. I mean she lost three people that were very close to her. Plus, she was living in a foreign land, and now she had no one left in Moab except for her two daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah. Now, unfortunately, Ruth and Orpah didn't have the chance to have children before their husbands died. And in those days, it was really important for women to get married and have children. And Naomi knew that, and she actually made a big sacrifice then. She told Ruth and Orpah to stay in Moab so that they could find new husbands and one day have children. Now, I know you what you might be thinking, guys. How is that even a sacrifice? Well, guys, it's actually a massive sacrifice because that would mean Naomi would be all alone. Because remember, her husband passed away, making her a widow, and her two sons also passed away, leaving her with no one to look after her in her old age. Now, most of us would not make such a big sacrifice. I mean, who wants to be alone for the rest of their lives and have no one to provide for you? I mean, it's human nature to look out for yourself and make sure your needs are met. But not Naomi. She put the needs of her two daughters-in-law above her own. She chose to be poor and alone for the rest of her life so her two daughters-in-law could find love again, have children and be happy. Now, Naomi wasn't the only one who made a sacrifice. Ruth then also made a huge sacrifice for Naomi and decided to go with her to Israel instead of staying in Moab and finding a new husband. Now guys, this was a big sacrifice for Ruth because remember, the people of Israel and the people of Moab weren't very fond of each other. Which means 
that her chances of ever getting married again were very slim. And remember, in that time, it was very important for them to get married and have children because it brought them so much joy and it meant they would be taken care of. So basically, Ruth was giving up a chance of having joy and security in her life to be with Naomi so that Naomi wouldn't be alone. And to top it off, Ruth was leaving behind everything she knew in Moab and to go and live in a foreign land. Now, I really think we can learn a lot about sacrifice from these two amazing ladies. I mean, they were willing to give up their own comfort and needs to help each other. Now, the thing to remember about sacrifice is, sacrifice is hard. I mean, if it was easy, then everybody would have done it. But the great thing about sacrifice is, sacrifice brings reward. Like for example, in Naomi's case, she was willing to sacrifice and be alone for the rest of her life. But her reward was Ruth, who was willing to stay with her so she wouldn't be alone and had someone to look after her. Now in Ruth's case, her sacrifice was also rewarded. In the end, she was rewarded with Boaz, who became her husband, and they then had a son called Obed. So, in other words, guys, what I'm trying to say is, we shouldn't be afraid of doing the right thing and putting others' needs before our own. We should be willing to be like Naomi and Ruth and sacrifice what makes us happy so that others can be happy. Because remember, sacrifice brings reward. Plus, the Bible tells us in Philippians 2, verse 3 to 4, that we must put others' needs before our own. Let me quickly read it to you guys. It says, Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. So, you see guys, what Naomi and Ruth did is something God wants us to do as well. Now, like I said, it's not always easy, but it's always worth it. So, from now on guys, let's commit to always do the right thing, even if it means we need to sacrifice something we want or need for someone else. And on those days that we maybe find it hard to put others before ourselves, I want you guys now to remember this memory verse. Galatians 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Now guys, this verse basically tells us that what you give, you will receive. So if you sacrifice and do good things for others, you will then receive good things as well. It's basically like the golden rule that says, do unto others what you want done to yourself. I mean, just look at Naomi. She did a good thing by sacrificing her own needs so that Ruth may find a husband. And in return, Ruth still stayed with her. And to top it off, she then got a grandson and someone to look after her. And Ruth, she did a good thing by sacrificing her chance at getting a husband by going with Naomi. And in the end, she still got what she wanted, a husband and a child. So guys, let's never shy away from doing the right thing and putting others' needs before our own. Because this is what God wants us to do. So guys, next time, go talk to that lonely kid at school. Even if it means you will be unpopular. Or go and help someone in need. Even if it now costs you some time or money. And guys, go and be that shining light to the world. Even if it means you have to give up everything. Because in the end, everything will work out for the good of those who love the Lord. So with all of that said, let's quickly look at what memory verse we will be doing this week. It's in Ruth 1 verse 16. And it says, Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will will be my people and your God will be my God. Wow guys, what a beautiful memory verse. 
I just love the commitment and sacrifice Ruth was willing to make for Naomi. So let's now add some moves to it, guys, so we can remember it a bit easier. Are you guys ready? Awesome. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Ruth 1 verse 16. Wow, guys, that was just now so much fun. Let's now actually do it one more time to make sure you guys have it. Are you guys ready to do it again? Awesome. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Ruth 1 verse 16. Awesome, guys. Please now make sure to memorize it this week so we can all say it together in next week's lesson. So guys, let's now move on and let's see what craft we will be making so we can remember today's amazing story and lesson. Wow, guys, don't you guys just love having these crafts that go so perfectly with our lessons? I know I do. So, guys, make sure to download the pages you need to make them by going to the description in today's video and then clicking on the blue link where it says, here is today's craft link. Now, once you are done with your crafts, guys, please make sure to send them to me as I just love seeing how creative you guys are and also sharing it with everyone in our lessons. So with that said, let's now have a look at all the amazing crafts that you guys sent in for last week's story of Samson. Well done everyone, you all did so great with your crafts. Thank you so much for sending them in so I can share it with everyone. And thank you for taking the time to do your crafts. Not just for me, but also for yourselves so you can remember the stories and lessons. So guys, now that we are almost at the end of our lesson, let's quickly sing one more song together for Jesus and then we can end off our lesson.
goodbye let's first pray so we can end off our lesson the right way thank you Jesus for today's lesson please help us to really take it to heart and apply it to our lives help us to never be afraid to sacrifice for the good of someone else and please help us to shine our lights wherever we go this week please also keep us safe this week and bring us all back here next week in Jesus' name we pray this and we all say Amen. Awesome guys. Thank you so much now for joining me today. I really hope this lesson of today taught you something new and that from now on you will never be afraid to sacrifice something for someone else. I'll see you guys now again next week for a brand new lesson. But until then, have an awesome week guys. Bye.